Kaufman. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Mary Welch, nurse practitioner and host of the Winning at Weight Loss 2.0 online show. And I am so excited to have our guest today, Lisa Carroll. Hi, Lisa. Thanks for being here. Hi. Hi. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're so lucky to have you here. Lisa is the founder of Keto Revolution, a health and wellness organization dedicated to spreading the word about the therapeutic effects of the ketogenic diet on health, wellness, and weight loss. And Lisa has an amazing story. Um, she's not only a certified health and ketogenic life coach, but she lost 105 pounds and over 60 inches using the ketogenic diet. So she knows what she's talking about. She's been featured on Women's World Magazine, so she may look familiar to you, um, detailing her weight loss success and coaching tips. So we're super lucky to have you share your wisdom. I know the audience will be eager. And you know, when I was on my weight loss journey, I always wanted to hear from people that actually did it that are maintaining the weight over time and wanted to know what they did so that I could start that journey. So thank you so much. Um, I would love to jump right in and just have you share your story because um, I would love to hear more about how you, how you wrapped your mind around starting when there, you know, sometimes it seems daunting when you have over a hundred pounds to lose. It, I know even for me, I felt like, gosh, maybe I'm just meant to be heavy and I've tried everything and you sort of feel like a, a failure and scared to try again or that. So just tell us all the things. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, I agree. I think, you know, weight loss is, is one of the topics that um, I don't know anybody in our generation who, um, who really isn't looking to, you know, firm up, look better and uh, to lose significant amounts of weight, but it can be daunting because there are so many, um, you know, like, uh, I don't know, what do you, you know, fad diets, all of these things that are out there. And so it can be complicated to know what to do. And for me personally, that was the case. I, um, I just didn't, I came to a point where I just did not know what to do. And I was um, eating healthy or eating clean or what I thought was healthy and clean. And um, I was exercising every day, but I could not lose weight. So this was one of, uh, you know, the classic problems that, that I had. And then I see many, many folks have. And um, I knew that there had to be an answer. Um, things just kept rapidly declining for me. My health began to decline after the weight gain. And um, like I said, it was like, like there was just nothing that I could do. And uh, I ended up having um, a lot of, you know, just fallout from, from the weight and metabolic issues and things like that. Um, I ended up with um, insulin resistance, um, fatty liver disease, PCOS, I mean, gallstones, all kind of things. So it's, it's just, it, you know, the fallout from it can be the most difficult part. And so I felt very hopeless. Um, I had anxiety, depression, um, all kinds of things from not being able to find a solution. And the type of person that I am, I'm always like looking for the missing piece. And I just felt like there had to be this missing piece to the weight loss puzzle because, you know, and, and I think it's, it's unfortunate, Mary, a lot of, a lot of people go to their doctors and they tell them I'm really not eating enough to have the kind of weight issues that I have. And I think, you know, for me, that was the case. And they, they just look at you like, well, yeah, right. Sure. You know? So, um, I just kept searching and searching and I began to uh, run across photographs of, um, women who had lost significant amounts of weight on the ketogenic diet. And one photograph in particular kind of really resonated with me. It wasn't like one of these before and after photos where you wonder if it's the same person. You knew that it was, and it was a body type that I could personally identify with. And I began to feel a little bit of, of hope and something in me, you know, just, just kept being drawn to that. And so I did a huge amount of research on the ketogenic diet, found the ketogenic diet and found the missing piece, you know? So, so that's kind of it in a nutshell. Good, and um, what a great story. How long did it take you to lose 105 pounds? 
Yeah, it took a little over a year for me. Wow. Um, I was fumbling around to begin with. I don't think it would have taken quite that long. Um, it is a significant amount of weight to lose, but it really it's finding how to do it, you know, because there are a lot of variations to the ketogenic diet. Everybody creates their own variation. And so when I was looking for a solution, after I just, you know, I dove into all the fundamentals of the ketogenic diet, why it works, um, you know, and, and really begin to develop through trial and error. Um, so for a while, it, it, took a, it took a while to weed through all the things that, you know, people said were ketogenic um, that were not, you know. So um, I ended up developing a formula for weight loss that, you know, once I found out what worked, I wanted to share that with, with other women. Great. So, you know, we throw out the word keto, but, you know, what is it exactly? And, um, you know, why is it so effective? Yeah. Well, the ketogenic diet is really um, a way of eating. I don't even like to call it a diet. It's a very low carb, very high healthy fat, moderate protein diet. And I think there's a lot of um, misconceptions about the ketogenic diet. There are people who advocate really high protein. There are um, people who think that it's the same thing as Atkins. There's just all kinds of things like that. But the, but the idea behind the ketogenic diet is that it allows you to shift your fuel source from burning that of, of glucose or sugar to burning fat effectively for fuel. And once you make this metabolic shift, then your body begins to run on a different fuel system. Um, things that you have you know, had in the past low energy, you know, the inability to tap your own fat stores. When we are burning sugar, you can either burn sugar or fat, but you cannot burn them both at the same time. So most of, most everybody, even people who are eating clean are sugar burners. And that means that you're burning glucose for your primary source of fuel. But when you shift over into a metabolic state that the ketogenic diet offers, then what begins to happen is is you absolutely change that whole metabolic state that you're in and it allows you to tap into your own body fat stores and to burn them for fuel. There are a number of things that have to take place for that to happen. And I think this is where people get tripped up, you know, on the ketogenic diet because you do have to have to know those things. But, but yeah, it's absolutely effective for weight loss. And one of the primary reasons that the ketogenic diet is so effective is that, you know, people look at it like, like it's, well, they eat, you know, on the ketogenic diet, they eat all that fat. Well, why, why does that do that? It puts our body in a metabolic state known as ketosis, which is the ketones are the result of fat burning. But what gets us there is the very low carb portion of how we are eating. It's really not the fat, but in the beginning, you have to have the fat because this is where the bulk of the calories come from on the ketogenic diet. And, you know, I'd like to add, Mary, I mean, the reason that it's so effective, the reason that it works is because it addresses the root cause of weight gain. And this was the key missing piece for me. And this is what, you know, what I long to teach other women is that if you, as long as you're putting a Band-Aid on something, then the weight is going to come back if you do get it off. It depends on your personal metabolic state, but the ketogenic diet, I haven't found it, it that it it works for everybody. I haven't found anybody that it, that it doesn't work for. Mm -hmm. And so I long to offer hope to women who are struggling and who, who feel that they have, you know, they're on their, their last leg with it, or uh, they're at a place where it's, this is their last ditch effort. Those are the type of people who, who I typically coach um, you know, if nothing has worked before, those are the people that I really, really want to work with, you know, because it's just, um, I, I long so much to offer the hope that I did not have for a very long time, yeah. but the ketogenic diet, it, um, it lowers the insulin levels in the body and insulin is our fat storing hormone. Mm -hmm. And when we're when we have large amounts of insulin in our body, we cannot 
burn fat. And so these are the things that, you know, that we address with the ketogenic diet. Yeah, that's fascinating. And, you know, before I started my weight loss journey, I was reading and, you know, a combination of ketogenic and intermittent fasting, same thing, they were playing around with insulin resistance. And that was just fascinating, because I had been following sort of eating six mini meals throughout the day. And to me, that just seemed wrong because you were eating right. all the time. So your insulin level was always up and it would drop and you'd eat again up and down. So I'm like, well, I'm never tapping into fat stores. So it makes sense that I'm putting all, all this fat. I have all this energy on my body that I can't tap into because there's always insulin around. So hacking it in some way so that your insulin level drops and now you can reach all the stored energy. Um, do you find that people end up having to eat less because they're burning calories on their body? So they're not hungry, but they're burning the stored fat for their calories. So well, I think that, you know, uh, you, you really are eating less on the ketogenic diet. Most of the women that I work with end up eating more because they are under eating. And, you know, I know that you probably find this in your practice as well, that, you know, we get people who come to us and they're eating five, six, seven, eight hundred or a thousand calories. Calories work very differently on the ketogenic diet than they work on a standard regular diet or any other kind of diet, because the bulk of those calories are coming from the fat. And, you know, this is an interesting, interesting fact, but carbohydrates give us the greatest insulin response. So again, why does that matter? Because insulin's the fat storing hormone. So anything that we're consuming that's giving us a high insulin response, what we're telling our body with that food is to store fat. And none of us want to do that. So carbohydrates are giving us the highest insulin response. Protein gives us 50% of that response, but fat barely moves those insulin levels. So this makes it an absolutely phenomenal diet to really lose weight. That fat is what we want to be eating. I, I do get women, Mary, that, that are so scared of their, you know, their new macros because there it's likely more calories than they have seen in a long time. So I spend, you know, I have to spend some time educating on the fact that the calories don't work the same way. And, you know, much of how I explain it to people is, you know, we know that, you know, calories from, you know, a nice green salad or, or, or something like that is different from, you know, eating a donut. The calories are different, even though both of those are carbohydrates, the calories are different. But with, you know, what people really are looking at, I think a lot of times is they're just looking, is this going to, what's this going to do to my blood sugar? But insulin can also be rampant in your body and your blood sugar be very low. So I think, you know, maybe that's a discussion about, you know, a little more about insulin resistance and how that works. But, um, but yeah, as far as like, like the calories and all, um, you're getting on a ketogenic diet, um, a regular well-formulated ketogenic diet, you are only getting maybe two to 300 calories from your carbs and protein and the remainder is coming from the fat. And so can you see how beautiful that system is and why it works? And, I, you know, I see women's eyes light up because they're like, oh, wow. You know, when you know that and that there's a scientific thing behind it and why it works, I love to see the hope in women's eyes, you know, I just see those eyes light up, like maybe this can work for me too. Yeah. So what sort of fats do you recommend people eat? Yeah. So in the beginning, you need a lot more fat on the ketogenic diet than you will end up with. But when we're talking about healthy fats on the ketogenic diet, we're talking about things like avocados, avocado oils, bacon, um, good quality sausage without, you know, without sugar, um, coconut oil. You can even have, you know, some, some nuts and things like that. Uh, a lot of times if, you, if there's significant weight to lose, we, we limit those portions in the beginning um, to amp up that weight loss. But yeah, so, so just things like that. Um, real food. <laughs> yeah, that, that's great. And you touched on insulin resistance. So let's talk a little more about that. What is it and how do we know if we have it? Yeah. So there are many, many signs uh, to insulin resistance. I think these are things that 
that people face every day. The number one thing I see is an inability to lose weight. There's belly fat. There can be near constant hunger, fatigue. You go to bed tired, you wake up tired, no matter how many you know, hours of sleep that you've had. Um, you can have intense cravings for sugar. Um, fatigue after meals is another uh, common sign. A lot of these migrating aches and pains that people have is coming from an underlying root of insulin resistance. Um, something else, uh, you know, would be like high cholesterol and triglyceride levels. This can also be a sign of insulin resistance, high blood pressure. The underlying root of a lot of high blood pressure is insulin resistance. Um, you can have hormonal imbalances. So if uh, ladies are struggling with that, uh, if you have PCOS, you, you have an underlying root cause of insulin resistance. And a lot of times that is, that is never detected. A lot of your thyroid disorders can come from that too. And, you know, they're finding out, um, and these are, you know, molecular scientists and, um, and ketogenic doctors, you know, who are diving deeper into insulin resistance. You know, I have found that, that not many people even really know what that is, but if they look at all these symptoms, symptoms, they will say, well, yes, I have that and that and that. So I take people through um, an insulin resistance checklist to, to determine, you know, what degrees of insulin resistance they may have. Um, another interesting thing is that 90, more than 90% of the people who have insulin resistance also have unknown fatty liver disease. Mm. And basically what begins to happen, um, Mary, is we're, we're basically allowed one teaspoon of glucose in our bloodstream at any one given time. Anything over that has to be swept out of the bloodstream and into your cells, muscles, and tissues so that they can, it can be used for energy. Well, over time, overconsumption of carbohydrates leads to um, your body producing more and more insulin. Every single time you eat, you know, you mentioned eating five or six meals. Well, the reason that's not a good idea is because you're stimulating insulin every single time you're doing it and you're telling your body to store fat. So over time, this overconsumption of carbohydrates um, and insulin producing um, foods then your insulin levels begin to increase in the body because it takes more and more. Your cells actually close. Your body, insulin resistance is a protective mechanism. And, and from having it, I can tell you it doesn't feel protective um, by any means. You feel it, I mean, it can totally feel like a curse because all of these things that, you know, that I've just mentioned can begin to happen. And I think one of the, the primary things as far as metabolic issues is, you know, you're getting, you know, high triglycerides, you're getting high blood pressure, you're getting things like that. Now, you don't have to have all of those symptoms. It just depends on how your body is, is processing that. But anyway, insulin resistance is a protective mechanism where it's protecting your cells from, from cell death, basically. And we are who we are on a cellular level. And so it's very important that, that our cells remain healthy. And so overconsumption of carbohydrates, processed carbohydrates, things like that, the cell begins to close. And then when you, your blood sugar goes up from eating those foods, your body signals your pancreas to make insulin. Insulin comes to sweep it out and to put it in that cell, but it becomes harder and harder and harder over time to get that glucose out of the bloodstream and into the cell. Now, if it didn't take it out, you and I would die. And that is not an exaggeration. It has to come out of the bloodstream. And so um, what do you think happens next, right? You know, the body says, well, that didn't work. Let's get some more insulin. And your body is very adaptive. So over a long period of time, your body said, well, it, it took, you know, let's just say it like this. It doesn't really happen like this, but let's say it took, you know, five squirts of insulin to get that glucose out of the bloodstream and into the cell or wherever it could put it. And so your body's very adaptive and it said, well, you know, it took five squares last time. So then it just starts making that amount each time. 
And so, um, but it is a protective mechanism. And if the cell is closed, then your body will often route that excess glucose to your liver. Mm -hmm. And that is a lot of how, you know, you can get fatty liver disease. It's not the only way, but it is a lot of it. And it is what happened to me. And it was silent. I did not know, you know, that that was right. happening. So. Yeah, and it, it does. Fatty liver is certainly out there and then it kind of makes the liver less effective at filtering toxins and things. So then you have an increase in toxic load, which raises inflammation and it, this vicious cycle happens. So Absolutely. we know now, let's say we have insulin resistance. What's the best way to kind of get a handle of it and perhaps reverse it and yes. change that? Um, it, I Absolutely, hands down, the ketogenic diet is the answer to that. Uh, and I know that from experience, not only with my own self, but working with, with thousands of women. Um, it can be reversed. There are some things that you, know, that you have to do and things that you have to put with it um, to make that happen, to get all those toxins that you're talking about out of your liver, to get a healthy liver while you're doing that. And just the mere fact of adopting a a very well formulated ketogenic diet that is focused on ingredients. You, you know, there's, as I said, a lot of different variations of the ketogenic diet out there. But what we want to do is we want to use one that is focused on um, attention to ingredients because they matter. Things like high fructose corn syrup, very damaging. Uh, to the liver, a sulfame potassium that's in many of your diet drinks um, wreaks havoc on your liver and it increases insulin resistance. So there are a lot of triggers that, you know, that will cause an increase in that. So if you want to reverse it, then, you know, you learn how to do the ketogenic diet in, in an effective way that really addresses uh, insulin resistance. And I don't know a whole lot of people that are really doing that. That is the focus of my practice is, you know, we want to help people where, where we've experienced the most pain, you know, and, and prevent people from having to go through what, what we did. And so, um, so yeah, but it can definitely be reversed with the ketogenic diet right. as can all of the symptoms that, that I mentioned, because most of these things that I mentioned today, I had them all and uh, have a clean bill of health and uh, having, having, you know, no, no issues. Um, That's you know, so great. So, and yeah. what I love is you talked about using real food and you have a lot of recipes on your website. Um, so people don't have to be hungry and restricted to eight or 900 calories and being hangry. I, I, I find when you do eat more fat, you're satisfied, you're, you have energy, you're able to release the fat and lighten up. So it's really transformative to try this. If someone's interested, what are some of the top tips you'd have for someone listening that might want to, you know, dip their toes in the water and, and start thinking about doing this? Yes. Um, well, I have a quick start guide that I'm offering through this, and uh, it's quite comprehensive. It gives you um, the foods to eat, the you know all the good lists, right? Um, for carbs, protein, and fat, uh, there are a few things to the ketogenic diet. You do need to address electrolytes. Um, that is also in there. And um, so, you know, you would just get the quick star guide and, um, and just look it over, look at the foods, see if you think that those are foods that you could, you know, you could use, you could benefit. I do pride myself, my husband and I work weekly on new recipes. And what we like to do is we like to take things that people love and we turn it keto so that you don't really have to miss anything. So you just want to start the ketogenic diet. If you are, if you've never done the ketogenic diet, if you are on, um, you know, diet drinks, if you're on, um, you know, sugar drinks and things like that, you want to just start removing the sugar from your life and, um, and eventually get those carbohydrates down to 20 total grams or below. Um, a lot of people advocate more, but if you're dealing with insulin resistance, if you have some of these symptoms that we've mentioned, it really takes getting them down to that low point. And then that is going to allow you to shift your body into a 
state of ketosis or fat burning. And, uh, and then you would just, um, you know, follow the rest of the, the information um, in the guide. And uh, I don't know, Mary, maybe, maybe reach out. Um, I'm also offering a free 30 minute coaching call to get you started on the ketogenic diet. And I would love to help as many people that feel like they might want to look into it and, um, and learn how to optimize this fantastic state of fat burning that their bodies can have. Yeah, such great information. And it's so awesome that you have a quick start guide available and the 30 minute coaching call because you know, once you get started, there may be some questions. And honestly, I had support on my journey and having someone available to guide you if you decide to work with Lisa um, would certainly be beneficial because um, it keeps you accountable and committed and when you feel like giving up and things get hard, you have someone to reach out to, to kind of pull you back in. And, and I know my coach helped me so much and, you know, our health is so important and we have one life. So really taking care of it, especially, you know, I started my weight loss journey when I was 50 and I thought if I don't do it now, when am I going to do it? Am I waiting until my health really deteriorates and it's harder to do? Um, so just you know, thinking about making that change and reaching out. Um, what's the best way for people to reach you, Lisa? Um, my website is ketorevolution.org. And uh, you can find me there most anytime. I do have a um, Facebook group uh, that's pretty active. It is also listed as Keto Revolution. You'll just want to make sure that it's mine. There are several lookalike sites out there. Um, but Lisa Carroll at Keto Revolution. Great. Well, such great information. Thank you so much for your time. I'm sure you're going to help a lot of people that are watching. So thank you very much. I really appreciate you having me, Mary, and allowing me to reach out to your audience and just women in need. It just means so much. Great. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to watch your emails and um, there'll be information about how to get the free offer as well as Lisa's contact information in those notes. So thanks again, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.